Hey friends, so sorry. So sorry we had a little bit of a difficulty there. Hopefully all of you can jump back on. <laughs> Hopefully all of you can jump back on this morning and be a part. Please forgive us. Absolutely. Um, I tested this last night and everything was fine. It's just the enemy trying to stop this broadcast. It was actually so. this morning. Hmm? It was actually this morning. You tested this morning after mm. midnight. Yeah, oh, yes. Yes. After midnight. Right. Take two. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So right, let's start back at the beginning. We just passed a couple of verses. Sure. Let's do it. All right. But now they mock me, many younger than I, whose fathers I would have disdained to put with my sheepdogs. Of what use was the strength of their hands to me since the vigor, since their vigor has gone from them? Haggard from want and hunger, they roamed the parched land in desolate wastelands at night in the brush. They gathered salt herbs. Salt herbs are actually, uh, it's, it's a thing um, called salt wort, and it grows in otherwise infertile areas. Which, so it's very interesting that he would talk about um, salt herbs. And they, now they, they are in the infertile places looking for um, the only thing that would grow. Um, mm -hmm. that, that it just bespeaks of, of his mindset at this point. There was a little lighter note in chapter 29. And here we are in chapter 30. We're back down on the dregs again. But now it seems Job is turning to um, sometimes when, when we have calamity and when we have trials, we will bring other people into it or we'll point out other people's trials yeah. in order to normalize the difficulty of our own situation. <clears throat> and, um, and sometimes we'll get so busy about like, nor, trying to normalize that we forget that this this too shall pass. We forget that this is a light and momentary trial, which right. is, you know, um, Paul calls them light and momentary trials. Jesus tells his disciples... They don't feel light and momentary. The they moment. don't feel light and momentary, but when... And, and when we get to the business of normalizing and dragging other people into our situation and lumping people in with us, <laughs> you know, oh, oh, everybody's as miserable as I am. Right. Can't nobody get nothing good. <laughs> <laughs> um, it really is, it really is the business of diminishing the glory and the eternality of the Lord and it magnifies is the, that's what my watch tells me it is. Right. Yes. Yeah. So it's, it's January, whatever at 7, 13 is 22nd at 7, 13 in the morning. That's Kronos. But then there's Kairos and Kairos is God's timing. Kairos is the perfect timing. Kairos is the time in which God has uh, for the fullness of what he wants to, to create in you. So oftentimes we get so uh, involved, so uh, just so kind of stuck in Kronos timing that we fail to see the Kairos timing of God, the timing that ultimately opens up our... Um, our understanding of his will, um, of what he wants for us in the moment. And so Paul does, you know, he's not making light of anybody's situation. I mean, in fact, he's talking to the persecuted church when he says that uh, this is light and momentary because he says this is going to pass. All of this will pass, but God's glory, God's goodness will last forever. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. All right, let's keep going. Um all right, the, so they're looking for salt wort, and they're going to eat broom tree roots. Verse 5. <laughs> that, none of that sounds appetizing it to me this morning. It, it doesn't. And <laughs> while we're on the topic of husbandry, uh, broom trees uh, grow in arid places. They actually grow in Palestine and uh, the Arabah, and so it's they're, they're, they're out in desolation is what these... Dudes who who Job is, you know, for for the Jews, uh, there's very much a, um, there's very much much an understanding of desolation versus fruitfulness. Yes, and anytime I'm just, can we just go here really quick? Yes, of course. Anytime you see desolation, in in particularly in around you where there is desolation there is idolatry there is yeah. idol worship yeah and um, it's it's in the scripture uh, it's it's in the context of scriptural history and it's presently working today 
in our surroundings. Where there is desolation, there is idol worship. An idol is, we can get technical about what idolatry is, but it is anything that you focus on um, more than you focus on God. Yeah. Uh, and Robert Heidler puts it this way. Uh, uh, he calls it a, a seed of iniquity has been yes. set up. And there's actually several things, and we can get into that at another time. But when you recognize a lot of the writings, um, uh, a lot of the, the traditions, um, not even traditions, a lot of the understanding of what it is to be without God. Yes. Okay? Um, it is sin or Sinai. It was a desert. Um Okay, sounds good, uh, Donna. We'll see you with Tim. Hey, Tim, by the way, love you, man. So, uh, uh, so glad for you guys to join us for Story of God. I just, I wanted to take a moment. Yeah, I know. We... But when you understand what being away from God looks like, it looks like sin, right? Okay. Right. There's a desert of sin that that ultimately that the Israelites spent a lot of time in, in between uh, Egypt and the Promised Land. Uh, it is the place of sin. It is desolation. When you understand that, uh, when the demons say, uh, when Jesus cast us out, we uh, uh, Jesus talks about the demons. He said, when when they are cast out, they go to the arid places and return with their friends. Right? Um, arid meaning desert, meaning nasty, hot places. When you when you um, when you hear about hell or Sheol from Jesus, he talks about places where the uh, the the there's no water to quench your thirst. So the desert is very much a symbology for the Israelites of what it is yes. to be without God. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. I didn't get very far. Sorry. Um, no, it's all right. They were banished from their fellow men, shouted as if they were thieves. They were forced to live in the dry stream bed rocks, among the rocks and in the holes in the ground. They brayed among the bushes and huddled in the undergrowth. A base and nameless brood, they were driven out of the land. Nameless brood. Man, that speaks so much to identity. Yes. Um, uh, so brood is children, right? Or, or pack <laughs> is what brood would kind of look like. And, and that speaks to, to uh, our identity. Job is saying here that when you are apart from God, right? Okay, so he's got, he's got those different... Um, symbologies in place. When you're apart from God, you are uh, uh, you are in desolate places, and you don't have any identity. You don't have a tribe right. to belong to. You are a nameless brood that just wanders about. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, and you know, doesn't it feel like that sometimes that the that there um, sometimes we are born of shame and and reproach that comes from trial and isolation. And, yeah. and doesn't it feel like that sometimes? Yeah. Um, that a, a, a brood is a collection of, of babies that a, a mother animal would have all at once. So twins are a brood of two. Yeah. Um, um, so babies that are born all at once. Um, and it denotes animals. It, it it yes, it is very animalistic. The yeah. the tone of the word, um, and isn't that exactly what happens? Or what? No, no, it's not. Isn't that what feels like happens when um and Nick when trial comes on us when um when we are put into isolation sometimes because yeah. sometimes like we feel like we're in this isolation away from other people and we can't break into communion or fellowship with others. Yeah. Sometimes we feel left out. Like I'm the one left out and that's, it feels like we are born of the shame of our situation. Yeah. I, I know individuals um, and I've, I've, I've been friends with, with individuals who have to be with another person all the time and they um they they get to the place and even I have been this way uh at some point where they desire other people's company um uh, so much that it takes an inordinate place in their life they they have a hard time being alone they can borrow my kids <laughs> right and i think 
uh, relationships are extremely important. We have to put them in the right, um, the, the right uh, what is it called when you have priorities? We have to put them in the right priorities of our life. But to overestimate, to over grab onto friendships, what that ultimately means is that there's some kind of lack um, in our own life right. that is causing us not to be okay with who we are and to know and be... Um, be satisfied with the relationship that that we have with with the father um or satisfied in ourself and our identity but that we have to constantly be surrounded by crowds uh in in order to feel normal right yeah so they're surrounded by people in order to be normal right verse nine and now their sons mock me in song i have become a byword among them in other words now there's another generation of this this um taunting that i feel yeah you know now yeah. there's a there's a freshness now there's a newness of taunting um i have become a byword among them they detest me and keep their distance they do not hesitate to spit in my face now that god has unstrung my bow and afflicted me they throw off restraint uh in my presence on my right, the tribe attacks. They lay snares for my feet. They build their siege ramps against me. They break up my road. They succeed in destroying me without anyone's helping them. Uh, they advance through a gaping breach amid the ruins. They come rolling in. I wanted to get to a punctuation. Yeah, yeah, sorry. That, so that's such a... Uh, this is Job just kind of laying out how he feels like he is attacked on every side. Uh, from his friends, Absolutely. which obviously, I mean, if you look within what his friends have been doing to him, they've ultimately been blaming him and saying, this has to be your fault. You're it's a fool, been, right. apparently. It's been incessant accusation from them. Well, you must have done something wrong. Um, uh, you must not be wise enough. You yes. must have not handled yourself correctly. Your family must have caused the iniquity. You must have, you know, whatever the variety that he has been incessantly accused and so um he he's saying that now i can't i can't even move forward for they stand in my road <laughs> they stand in the middle of my way forward yeah and they beat me back with their words yeah and and it does feel like that sometimes especially in in relationships when there's difficulty yes. that comes um, it feels like all of your all of the people are against you it's really hard to parse your friendships when there's difficulty in your relationships because the 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 thing that the enemy wants you to think or the thing that you automatically yes. kind of like jump to um that's right they they were they were placing blame because they didn't comprehend that that's exactly it's happening yeah. but you can get to a place where you um where you think everybody's against you which is exactly where job's at he says everybody's against me and and notice that that he says that the lord unstrung his bow in other words the lord is the one who ultimately made him uh he feels made him the object of the scorn and didn't give him a way to defend himself against it right and um and oftentimes um i get to a place in a relationship where I'm like i can't i can't defend myself against this anymore uh really honestly all my words don't really matter anything there's a there's a difficulty here and i can't talk my way out of it so uh but but job is really feeling and i don't know if you guys have ever felt i know i've felt sometimes as if um all of my relationships are are falling apart i don't focus on the ones that that are healthy that are right but you tend to you tend to when you get in the middle of that focus on the things that are that are difficult between you and other people so yeah verse 15 terrors overwhelm me my dignity is driven away as by the wind my safety vanishes like a cloud and now my life ebbs away. Days of suffering grip me. Night pierces my bones. My he, gnawing... He's going to get really serious here. Right. <laughs> my gnawing pains never rest. In his great power, God becomes like clothing to me. He binds me like the neck of my garment. He throws me into the mud, and I am reduced to dust and ashes. A few things are going on right here. So he begins the chapter by talking, uh, by, by contrasting the his age with the friends of his father's age, yeah. you know, um, and he sort of puts himself, um, 
he sort of puts himself at the place of growing older and now his days are expiring. Right. You know, so he's aging even through this chapter. Um, and um, uh, what else was I going to say? I was fixing to say, oh, I know what I was going to say. Verse 19, uh, he, redu- he throws me into the mud and I am reduced to dust and ashes. Here, dust and ashes are to mean insignificance. But um, later on, to- toward the end of the book, I, I, the, yeah, I think it's even like the last chapter, dust and ashes are signify, coming from Job's mouth, they signify repentance. Mm-hmm. And either that's good. Wherever wherever you are, um, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, wherever you are, not geographically, um, wherever you are, mentally and emotionally and spiritually, the place of humility can look like insignificance, or it can look like repentance. Yeah, but that's good. But. Um, we can call it the same thing. We can call it all dust and ashes, but it depends on our perspective, how we view um, at the importance of the place. Right. The importance of us being in dust and ashes is to acknowledge from dust I came and to dust I will return. Yeah. Right? But sometimes we're like, oh, we're in the dust and ashes, <laughs> misery. Um and I find it well. I find a lot of stuff in uh, in scripture is is based on a heart position. It really is. Yeah, and so so you know you can be uh, persecuted, but not abandoned. You know, uh, it, you you uh, depending on where your heart position is in the middle of it is ultimately, I believe, where the outcome that the Lord. Now, there's obviously times that the Lord you know, chastens his children, or there's all, uh, obviously a time that that, that the Lord will um, uh, discipline his children, right. right? He disciplines those that he loves, yes. Um, but, but depending on how your heart position is in the middle of that determines the outcome. Um, the, you know, Jesus tells the, uh, the parable of the son that said, um, uh, no, I, I won't do that, and the son that said, yes, I will. Um, the one that said, yes, I will... Uh, didn't do the thing and so ultimately he showed that his heart was disobedient yes but the son that said no i'm not going to do it but still did it showed that his heart was obedient so sometimes the the reality is our heart position parenting is harder than just face value (laughs) that's what that means to me every day anyway go ahead our heart position is more important um sometimes we say things but our hearts are far away from the thing that we say. Right. God said, you know, God says to the to the teachers of the law, He says, "You speak good, but your hearts are far from Me." And so, the heart position of where you are in that situation, how you determine that your life is going to take a course from that situation, yes. um, and what you are going to do, what your responsibility in the situation is, is is a very important thing to God. Yes, it is, and honestly. Um, honestly, the, the best place to be, um, in our relationship with God is in that dusty place where we find not, not the place of insignificance, but the place of humility. Yeah. Um, the Lord brought me from dust and I will return to dust. Yeah. Everything on this earth will pass away, but the word of God is the only thing here in this present time that will not pass away. Yeah. Solomon calls that wisdom. He says, he, he says the beginning of wisdom is the fear of God. In other words, God's big, God's infinite, God's out here, and we, our lives are just, you know, like right. dust in the wind. Right. The place dust to not... In the wind. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. I didn't know there was a song. <laughs> the it place is. to not be found, though, is in the place of false humility. Um, and that's another balancing act as well. Yeah. Um, the pendulum can swing on one side.
the cries mm. for help in his distress. Have I not wept for those in trouble? Has not my soul grieved for the poor? Yet when I hoped for good, evil came. And he's saying, haven't I stored up? Haven't I sown righteousness for into others' lives? Haven't I been the one mm. to, to lay down um, my thoughts and my will in order to care for the needs of others? And yes, if Job were not on trial here, yes. those things would have weighed into it. And in fact, they do. It's just not an immediate payout. Man, if the Lord has not been speaking to me the past week or two about heavenly rewards, and the Lord said to me, um, the Lord said to me, he said, every time you've told David about a grievance that he has caused you, because let's just be really real. We've had a hard time this past two weeks. Um, well, I mean, not, I'm not, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> every, the Lord said to me, he said, every time in your marriage you've told David about a grievance he's caused you, you have, you have gotten your reward. Mm. I said, what in the world? He said, you have thwarted your heavenly reward instead of bearing up under the pressure that he would put on you or the difficulty that he would ask you to go through, um, not intentionally, but that by proxy of, of being in relationship with him. Okay, honor is, in the Greek, bearing up under the weight of something. And so when we... When, in the moments where where the Lord was saying, in the moments where I have chosen not to bear up under the pain or the frustration or the hurt or the difficulty that has been asked of me because of my relationship with David, the Lord says, you have thwarted your heavenly rewards. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And so I have been praying, Lord, help me to bear up under because I got to have more reward than this. <laughs> I mean, I'm, just, I'm, being, I'm being glib about it and being casual and joking. But this has been my honest prayer. Lord, help me to bear up under. Because the reward, the eternal gain has to be greater than this of the here and the yeah, now. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And, and the eternal rewards, love you. And the eternal rewards um, are going to be greater for those that, that put their treasure with him. You know, Jesus said... Um, where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. And treasures, we, we, we constantly think of that as monetary stuff or, or, or material stuff. But the reality is, we, what we find most valuable, there will our heart be as well. If we find, uh, if we find our own uh, ways of doing things more valuable than the other person, then we will, th then, and we focus on that, then ultimately what we'll wind up doing is putting our heart there. If we, um, <laughs> good, Michelle, I'm glad that, I'm glad she that we're that able to bless ago. you. Oh, did she? Yes. Okay. Um, if we, uh, wind up, uh, desiring our children more than the father or the kingdom, then ultimately our reward will be with our kids. Now, I'm not saying that the kids aren't a reward or that they aren't uh, a blessing from God. What I'm saying is uh, that... What you're saying. What I'm saying is if we focus on only those things uh, to the exclusion of the other, uh, uh, of where the Lord uh, has our eternal reward, because realize that, that um, while at attachment is not an evil or a sin, that the Lord desires that we not be um, glued to things of this world, right? Um, and, and while family is, is desperately important, and, and relationships are desperately important. Kids are desperately important, right? And they are, they're good disciples. The reality is that the Lord said, seek first the kingdom and all of these things will be added. They aren't evil, but when we put them in wrong priority with where God asks us to put priorities, seek first the kingdom. The reality is that relationships can't work. Relationships don't work. Uh, if you don't love God more than the other person, because what you'll wind up doing is putting the other person on a pedestal that they'll never be able to reach. You'll wind up th believing and thinking things of that person that they'll never be able to attain to. And you have your reward then. Um, but the Lord says, uh, store up your rewards instead in heaven 
where where uh, sickness and moth death and, and moth and rust and all of don't that destroy and thieves yeah. don't break in and steal. Right, exactly. And so there's going to be difficulty in this life. I mean, it's it. Jesus like assured it. He said, "In this life, in this world, you will have trouble, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world." So where do right. we put our trust and hope? We put it in Him. I, I think you know. Yes, relationships are important. Uh, are a important part of this, but any place in any way we try to squeeze out of the here and now our reward or what we deserve or what we need. Yeah. When we try to squeeze it out um, of this life instead of this, of this life, yeah. instead of our re- instead of our relationship, I think the reason I, I, I began with a relationship is because the relationship with our our relationship with our heavenly Father is is much more fruitful than any earthly relationship that we'll ever have. Hi, Roger. Yeah. Hey, Pastor Roger. Um, and um, but but any place and in any way we try to milk this life for all it's worth, yeah. we may be in danger of giving up our heavenly rewards. And I don't say that to be legalistic, but I say that to encourage you to set to to reexamine how it is that we approach these these things, these situations. Yeah. So do we say to ourselves? You know, it might be a better thing for us so. to say to ourselves: um, is is there is there something to be gained here and now that um, that the Lord wants to give me, or is it better that I allow the Lord to to store up for me heavenly treasures yes. as a result yeah. of the hardship or the persecution or the frustration or the the damaging words that are said or the 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 pain of a kind you know, of kid running from God, you know? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, there are some people who who never get over the fact that their kids turn from from the way um, and and start following after uh, the world's way. And I, I say never get over. That's a difficult place. Let me let me um, not say never get over, but have a uh, have a difficulty and lose trust in God. But Jesus, remember what John the Baptist wrote Jesus and said, are you the one or should we wait for another? And Jesus said, blessed is he who does not fall away on account of me. In other words, we put our trust and hope in Jesus. And if it doesn't turn out the way that we think it should, we still trust and hope in Jesus. Yes. We attain to the way instead of following yes. the, the hurt. And let me say this, Dr. Sherry Lee, ha <laughs> ha Okay, my mother, you know, we quote all these people and um, when it comes to like our family and yes. stuff, we're like my mom or my mother-in-law. Anyway, um, but she's a, she's a very wise and learned lady. And so um, anyway, my mother-in-law this past Thursday very clearly stated, she said, my relationship with my husband is wonderful. I love him more than anyone else. She said, but that relationship is literally only for now. In heaven, it will be no more. I, it, and I think that's where we trip up a lot of times is when we forget that these relations, my relationship with you, my relationship with my kids is literally just for now. When we are made complete, when we are, a, when we are made new, when, when our, when our bodies are, are completely new and we look God face to face, look Jesus face to face, we will know even as we are fully known. Mm-hmm. And and I think we'll be able to see what a v- pale shadow are these earthly relationships have to the our the incomparable love. Yes, to the incomparable love and that's what and that's what these relationships serve a purpose for. Yes. Is allowing us to give and to receive heavenly love, to be sanctified and to be made perfect in love now. So that we don't get to heaven and have culture shock. And that's a whole nother thing. Um, and we'll, <laughs> well talk about that later. I think the working out, you know, of the love of God here on earth yes. is is vitally important. Mm-hmm. You know, it's hard not to feel like um, it's hard not to feel like this is a test, like like all of our life is like this one big test that God is saying, Hey, you know, try to um, try to ace this <laughs> this thing. It, it it's not that. It's hard not to feel that way. But I think understanding uh, the love of God 
I wasn't waving at nothing. There was like a little dust particle. Was going... um, but understanding the love of God in the middle of uh, of a fallen world um, is such a not only such a beautiful concept, but also a concept of God. That while there is uh, destruction and death and sin amongst the world, that we give our agape, our love, just as the Father did. Yes. Okay, we still have a little yes. bit left to go. Yes, Sorry. four verses. Okay. The churning inside me never stops. Days of suffering confront me. I go about blackened, but not by the sun. I stand up in the assembly and cr- <laughs> cry Sorry. for help. Um, I have become a brother of jackals, a companion of owls. Um, I believe those are unclean, if my memory serves me well. I think so, too. Uh, My skin grows black and peels. My body burns with fever. My harp is tuned to mourning and my flute to the sound of wailing. Wow. (laughs) And for for me as a musician, there are just times when I want to play a different song. Yes. There are just times when don't you don't you just want to sing a new song? Um, the psalmist encourages us to sing a new song to the Lord, because when we refresh uh, the 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 when we refresh the song in our spirits, it it sort of refreshes us. Mm-hmm. When we choose to move on to a new tune of praise and a new beat of worshiping the Lord, if you'll allow me to use a, a musical metaphor then um it refreshes our spirits and so in the same in the same way, or in opposite way job is saying i can't sing but one tune right now and yeah. it is the tune of desperation yeah. and um it's a d minor <laughs> it's this it's the tune of sadness <laughs> And I think I think sometimes we get in that place, don't we? Where where we're like, uh, and obviously music does elicit emotional responses. I mean, we we get actually that, right? music is one of the um, um, manipulating music is one of the qualities of a sorcerer in scripture. And I've been doing some study, Ooh. and I can actually, which is, um, and this is just a, a aside a, an aside, but um, uh, Lucifer was the worship leader in heaven. And so I'm just gonna throw that out there, um, but and I, I've been doing some study, and I could I could unpack it for you, um, but we don't have that kind of time yet this morning. I don't know that they'll stay with us. No, hey, good morning, Robin. No, I have to do some work. <laughs> we, we, we have things to do. Um, no, but but uh, music obviously does emotion elicit response control. It can control Very a situation, much. right? Absolutely. And um, and so Job is saying here. Uh, that that uh, everything that comes from me, that comes from the inside of me, is sad. Right? My I, I can't sing anything but sad tunes, and so this is a this is a real deep dark hole that Job has found right. himself in. He recognizes the the the, the limits of uh, his mortality. He recognizes that uh, that this is. Um, that this is, I mean, this is as bad as he's ever known it, right? This is as bad as it's ever been. And he also recognizes that death might be a release from this thing. And I don't know if you've ever been in that place where you've been considering, you've been saying, death might be a release from this pain, this this awfulness that's here. But what we see is, and and knowing the end of the book is like, it's a cheat, right? It's a little bit of a cheat. We know the end of the book. It's a needed cheat. It is a needed cheat. God gives back to him. Uh, he's right. His trouble is momentary. It is a difficulty that is momentary because God's incomparable awards, right? Eternal, rewards. Eternal. eternal rewards that last um, uh, are just around the corner, are just on the other side of difficulty. C.S. Yeah. Lewis uh, says that um, that uh, the re- oh the rewards that we often forfeit only because we did not endure a moment uh, more e- endure a more a moment more and I think I think that's a reality for us as people of faith sometimes we quit when the when the tough gets tough because we don't hold on for that which is to come for Paul that which was to come was was the embrace of Jesus. You know, he he said at the he said in his letter he said I've run the race 
Um, I've uh, I've done my job. Yes, I did what was and and he had many rewards here on earth. He got to see churches thrive and grow and yeah. the gospel being preached and these were good things. He sought after the kingdom. He saw lives transformed into um, purpose purposeful um, lives for the kingdom. He yeah. saw you know people transformed. I want to talk about one more person too, just bef- just before we end, if that's okay. Um, uh, somebody named Stephen, right? Stephen is one of the only disciples, one of the only other people in scripture that were able to peer into heaven on this side of eternity, on this side of eternity, we're, we're able to see, uh, the Lord high and lifted up. And, uh, ultimately when he is getting ready to be stoned to death, that was Stephen's reward on earth is to be able to peer into heaven. And he's, and, and he says it in front of everybody. I see you now, Lord. I see you now sitting at the right hand of, uh, uh, uh of, uh, the father. And so, uh, you, uh, isn't it, isn't it so important that Stephen sees that as a reward that oftentimes we get our eyes off of the real, glory the of re- God. Right. The reward is, sometimes we make the reward the vindication or the reward um, the, the setting right of, you know, situations. Uh, the the reward is sometimes um, seeing, you know, whatever whatever we long for. Yeah. Seeing that come to pass, but the, but the greatest reward is the one that we achieve when we see Jesus face to face and when we allow him to be high and lifted up and um, when we go back to that place of humility like we talked about earlier in this um, earlier in this this time together we can choose to look at dust as the being insignificant or we can look at choose to look at our coming from dust as a place of humility and a and uh, limitless availability for the Lord to be magnified because of yes. our humility. Yes. So that's so good. Yeah. Let's keep our eye on glory instead of the shiny things yes. of earth. Good. You ready yes. to pray? Let's, let's pray. do it. Yeah. Let's thank pray. you, Lord. Thank Father, we worship you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you we that know. you are um, a yeah, big uh, God. You yes. are a uh, an infinite God. And we are finite people. (laughs) You have made us eternal, but yet our time here on earth is very short. To understand your glory and your goodness while we are here, Father, um, it has to be a heart position that we take with you, Lord. So, Father, forgive us for the times when we have sought after earthly rewards instead of heavenly rewards. Forgive us for the times, Father, when we have seen the shiny things and we've gone after those instead of the treasure Mm. that you have for us in heaven. Yes. We don't want to forfeit our rewards, Lord God. Yeah, Yeah. forgive me for going after vindication, Father. Forgive me for going after um, things being righted more than I've gone after your glory and your presence. God, we want to reestablish. God, today we do reestablish that um, that you, the reward of your presence and yes. the, the reward of heaven of what is to come we as we declare with our mouths and we decree in our own lives that the reward of heaven is far greater sure. than any reward of things being set right here yes. on earth and so we live to see you and to be with you in uh, the new Jerusalem. We live to be seated with you in heavenly places. We live to be, um, uh, to be seated even here and now and not to be de-seated by frustrations and not to be de-seated by difficulties and not to be de-seated from our place of seatedness with as co-heirs with Christ by what would come to us. Shukurama. But Jesus, just the way you bore up under, yeah. we take on ourselves the yes. yoke of Christ and we bear up under as well. In Jesus' name, yes. we bear up under the things that we face. We bear up under persecution. We bear up under hardship. We bear up under frustrations. Lord, so that you can be glorified in our situations. In the name of Jesus yes. Christ of Nazareth, yes. we cast down 
arrogance and pride that would cause us to stand up when you mean for us to bear up under. Yes. We don't shirk the privilege of sharing in the sufferings of Jesus, but yeah. we bear up under today in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Father, we, we just ask now that you would uh, show us now, God, your glory. <laughs> Shine on us, Lord God, your glory, so that we would not... Uh, follow, we would not find find uh, strength in the things of this world. We would not uh, take the temporary nature of this world uh, and, and be in despair, but Lord, that we would glory in the fact that we uh, shall be lifted up. We will be lifted up. We, that, that every one of us will wear a crown that calls you Lord. And so you have made a way for us to do that, Father. We thank you so much. We thank you so much. Now, yes. Let me bless you in the name of Jesus. Let us let us just declare over you. You are the apple of God's eye. Amen. You are the apple of his eye. And even in the short, dusty time that you are here on earth, the Lord has great things for you. Great things to show you. Great things to, to work in you and through you. And today, walk recognizing that you Amen. though you are dirt... <laughs> that you also have the Ruach, the breath of God yes. inside of you, that you are a son and a daughter today. Yes, amen. Yeah, amen. good, good. Hey, guys, have a great, what is it, Tuesday. It's Tuesday. <laughs> have a great Tuesday, and we will see you guys all tomorrow morning for another Story of God morning devotional with David and Karen. Love you guys.